After using the S22 Ultra for six months, I wanted to talk to you about the good things, the bad things, and then also give you a few tips to help you get more out of your phone. Now this is essentially the S22 Note Ultra, and I'm also gonna put it in context with some of its competitors and with the S22 Plus. Fact, not a lot of people think about the ergonomics of the phone during the buying process. There's a lot of focus on specs and features, but it's important to remember that this is a device that you're going to handle and use every day. The S22 Ultra is definitely a larger phone. Now, personally, I think that the curved edge design, which was borrowed from the Note 20 Ultra, is very comfortable to use. And because the edges taper in, it's easier for me to grip this phone with one hand, and there are no sharp edges that dig into my hands like with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, at the same time, I think it's really important that if you can, you go to a store and you handle it before you buy one. Go ahead and type on it with one hand, with two hands, play some games, navigate around the home screen, the settings and different apps, and make sure that it's comfortable for you to use. Also, compare the user experience with the S22 Plus and the Z Fold 3, which I'll get to in a bit. Now, admittingly, I'm not the most careful user, and I've dropped my S22 Plus a couple of times during the past six months. And the Gorilla Glass Victus Plus on the front and the back have been extremely durable. And the same is true for the new Armor aluminum frame. So far, I don't have any scratches on the back or any major dings on the frame itself, and I'll revisit this after a full year. I've also had no issues with water or dust so far, so that's not really a long-term concern for me. The one thing that I wanna point out is that the back of the phone is actually quite slippery. So if you plan on using it without a case and you have a chance to hold it before you buy, I would definitely recommend it. As far as aesthetics, I've said this in some of my other comparisons, but this might be the nicest looking phone that I've ever used. I absolutely love the shape, the frame, which somehow never picks up fingerprints, and I'm a huge fan of this phantom white color, although I have to be honest, that burgundy was a close second for me. Now I'll talk about the display next, but I love the smaller bezels, and until we have an under display camera that can perform as well as this one, I'm absolutely fine with a pinhole camera, and I definitely prefer it to the large notch on the iPhone or the underwhelming under display camera on the Z Fold 3. Now, one of the major reasons to get the S22 Ultra is the built-in S Pen. We're now getting nine millisecond latency, which has been really nice. And even though I'm someone who only uses it a few times a week, I really appreciate having it and not needing to go look for a tablet in order to mark up or to sign a document. For biometric authentication, we're getting facial recognition and a very good on-display fingerprint sensor. I have both thumbs programmed and the sensor has worked really great for me in terms of accuracy and speed, even when my hand is wet. And this brings me to the actual display, which is insanely good. It's a 6.8 inch display with a resolution of 1440 by 3088. It supports HDR and it has 120 Hertz adaptive refresh rate. That means that it can automatically adjust to give you a faster refresh rate for smoother animation and scrolling. And at the same time, it can lower the refresh rate and save on battery life when you're looking at static content. Now, the image quality on this dynamic AMOLED display is unbelievably good. So whether you're watching movies, you're binging YouTube videos, or playing games, you're going to love this display. It's also extremely bright, but 1750 nits peak brightness. So that's great when you're outside or when you're in situations where you have to deal with reflections. Now, if you want to enable the brightest possible mode, make sure that you go to settings, display, and then toggle on the settings for extra brightness. Keep in mind that this will use up more battery, but when you need it, it's a great feature to have. And speaking of battery, the S22 Ultra comes with a 5,000 milliamp per hour battery, which has been pretty good. And so far I get about eight hours of use out of it. Of course, that depends on what I'm doing and the brightness of the display. But for the most part, I finish a typical day with somewhere between 15 and 30% battery left. Now, of course, if I'm going to game for hours or if I use the GPS a lot, then I do need to charge it during the day. But for how I use the phone, there's rarely a period of more than four to five hours where I don't have the opportunity to charge it. If I'm at my desk, then it's sitting on a charger. If I'm driving, again, it's connected to a wireless charger. So while the S22 Ultra doesn't last as long as my iPhone 13 Pro Max, I'm happy with the overall battery performance. And we do get a maximum of 45 watt charging. That's 
not as fast as some of the other phones on the market, but I can get a full charge in a little bit over an hour. Now, there are a couple of things that you can do to save on battery life. So first you can go to settings, display, screen resolution, and you can lower the resolution from quad HD plus to full HD plus. This will slightly reduce the sharpness of the display, but also reduce battery use. Next, you can extend the battery life by limiting the refresh rate to 60 Hertz, which is under settings, display, motion smoothness. Again, you're giving up on smoother scrolling and animation, but you're gaining battery life. Now, personally, I don't do either of those because I'm willing to trade the best user experience for potentially having to charge the phone a little bit during the day. One thing that I recommend that you do, especially if you plan on keeping this phone for a long time, is to turn on the protect battery feature. You can find it under settings, battery and device care, more battery settings, and it will limit the maximum charge to 85%, which will extend the lifespan of your battery. Now, I do have to mention that the S22 Ultra does not come with a charger, and that's becoming pretty common nowadays with some of the flagship phones. It's a little frustrating that a $1,200 phone doesn't come with a charger at all, let alone one that's capable of the fastest charging speeds that the phone can accept. One feature that I undervalued in the S22 Ultra when I first got it is reverse charging. In case you're not familiar with it, you can actually use the S22 Ultra to charge another device. Now, I've used it to charge charge another phone when doing a comparison. I've also used it to charge my Galaxy Buds Pro when I forget to charge them. Another one of the reasons why I would recommend looking at the S22 Ultra versus the Fold, the Flip, or the S22 Plus is the camera system. Now this is the best camera system that Samsung has to offer. I was already impressed with it at launch and over the past few months it has gotten a few updates. Now, I do want to mention that Samsung is now offering four years of OS updates and five years of security updates, which is great to see. As far as the camera hardware goes, we're getting a 108 megapixel wide camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and then two 10 megapixel telephoto cameras, one with a three time optical zoom and one with a 10 time optical zoom. We're also getting a 40 megapixel front facing camera. Now, just as a point of reference, the $1,000 S22 Plus comes with a 50 megapixel wide, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 10 megapixel three times zoom, and then a 10 megapixel front facing camera. Now back to the S22 Ultra, this camera system has been very impressive. The image quality is excellent and Samsung took care of some overexposure issues with an upgrade earlier this year. Now overall, the images are bright, they have very good dynamic range, and the HDR processing is able to retain more details in the shadows, and at the same time, bring back blown highlights. Now, here's a quick comparison with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and if you wanna see a more detailed comparison, I'll link to that video at the end of this one. Portrait mode has been a bit of a mixed bag here. It does an absolutely fantastic job at edge detection, but at the same time, you can see that it's fairly harsh, meaning that when you zoom in, you can see a distinct line where the hair ends, and all of the hair is equally in focus. And if you shot this with a DSLR, there would be more of a natural fall off from the focus plane, which is her eyes. Now, of course, having a three and a 10 time optical zoom means that you're able to get closer to the subject without losing image quality. And you can zoom up to 100 times, but that's digital zoom, which does come with a noticeable loss in quality. Still, when I'm far away from a subject and I don't have the option of getting closer, it's better to have digital zoom than nothing at all. Now, the front-facing camera on the S22 Ultra is also very impressive. 40 megapixels is a very high resolution and the images are sharp and extremely detailed. Now, this goes back to where I said that I would rather have better overall image quality with a pinhole camera than an under display camera with poor quality. And night photos were also extremely impressive on this phone. Handheld shots came out great and actually looked brighter than real life, which could be a pro or a con depending on your preference. And switching to video, the S22 Ultra did a fantastic job. The image quality and stabilization of handheld video were excellent, and you can see that even as I chase Mac around, the video is very stable and the exposure remains fairly constant. The S22 Ultra also has some great built-in features if you wanna move beyond basic point and shoot. You have options like Pro Photo and Pro Video, which give you full control over the camera. There's slow motion and super slow motion, and then one of my favorite features, Director's View. This lets you preview what each of the cameras sees in real time, 
and then you can switch between them while you're recording. Now, if you're a content creator, this is a fantastic feature. And even if you're not, you can record special moments while at the same time, capture your reaction to them. From a performance standpoint, here are quick benchmarks of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, but I really wanna focus on real life use. This phone has plenty of processing power. It comes with eight gigs of RAM if you buy 128 gigabytes of storage, and then anything between 256 gigabytes and one terabyte comes with 12 gigs of RAM. One thing to keep in mind is that the S22 Ultra does not come with a micro SD card slot. So make sure that you get as much internal storage as you need for the apps and the games that you want. There was some controversy with Samsung throttling performance with the game optimizing service when you're playing games, but not during benchmarks, which has been done before by other companies and is definitely deceiving. At the same time, the fact that you can now disable this feature isn't necessarily something that matters long-term. Like sure, the games will run at higher FPS for a few minutes, but without this sort of preemptive throttling or any form of active cooling, the chip will get hot within a few minutes and then will still throttle back performance in order to protect itself. What I hope to see in the future is manufacturers focusing on sustained performance, on thermal management, and on battery life, rather than trying to achieve the highest peak performance. But that's a topic for another video. Now, gaming has been very good on the S22 Ultra. I love the big display, the AKG tuned speakers are excellent, and when playing PUBG, I could go up to HDR for graphics with extreme frame rate, or Ultra HD for graphics with Ultra for frame rate. Now, the speakers are also great when you're watching content and they do support Dolby Atmos. And to be fair, when I'm playing games, I'm always wearing headphones. I also stream games with the Xbox Game Pass app and this worked really well both with an Xbox controller or with my new Razer Kishi V2. Now, as far as the operating system, Android 12 and One UI 4.1 has been very responsive. It's been fluid and I love being able to customize it for my specific needs. We're also able to run two apps side by side or one on top of the other, which is actually pretty manageable with a display this size. Now, finally, if you wanna drive more of a desktop-like user experience, you can reboot in DeX, connect a keyboard, a mouse, and an external display, and then get to work. Now, another area where I'm happy to see Samsung continue to develop is their ecosystem. A Galaxy devices continue to improve with features like auto switching with the Galaxy Buds Pro, app continuity across devices, tablet keyboard sharing with your phone, and a shared clipboard for copying and pasting across devices. So it's great to see that Samsung continues to shrink the gap with Apple's ecosystem. Now you should see how the S22 Ultra compares with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.